Hi, I'm Don Rittner. And I'm Justina Kostek. So today we're going to continue exploring Sharon Springs in upstate New York along the Great Western Turnpike. Who would guess that some of the businesses in this small village would have a worldwide reputation? So let's go visit one as we continue exploring history, history on, on the, the road. road. One of the more interesting businesses in Sharon Springs is Adelphi Paper Hangings, a company that makes historic wallpaper just like they did in the 18th century. And many of the country's historic sites rely on them for matching their historic walls. The Wallpaper Company is located in the old Lehman Hardware Store. Eugene Lehman carried on his father's hardware store, but also made beautiful violins and stringed instruments here for 42 years. He was a professional violinist and orchestra leader during the 1920s and 30s. The building was also used as an opera house and cafe. We're going to talk to the owner, Steve Lawson. Hi, Don. Hey. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Come on in. Thank you. So, Steve. We understand that you don't just make wallpaper, you make historic wallpaper. Can you tell us a little bit about why was wallpaper even invented? Wallpaper was simply a way of decorating. Uh, it was, um, people started putting paper on the walls in the uh, 16th century. Um, just individual sheets they would paste up. Uh, and as time went on, they started gluing sheets together and then printing larger patterns. And, um, wallpaper was sort of a, an inexpensive way of decorating. The, the very rich folks would have textile hangings on the wall. And, and paper hangings were, were, were similar, but they were, like I say, they were less expensive. So. So the rich had tapestry. The, and, the rich and had the poor tapestries. Had wallpaper. Yeah, yeah. So the poor man's uh, tapestry. Yeah. So it seems like you'd have more variety in wallpaper than you would with tapestry. Well, I mean, gotta, it's you know, each 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 medium has its own characteristics, um, and uh, we just happen to like making wallpaper. So it was really popular, I know, during the Renaissance in Europe, and um, and when did it? kind of come over to America? Was it early colonial time? Well, or? yeah, there was there was uh, a number of instances where uh, uh, early homes uh, had wallpaper that they had imported from, from England. Um, after the Revolutionary War, then the American paper staining uh, industry came into being. And we're printing patterns that were similar to English patterns, patterns that were similar to French patterns. They would always say, well, you know, ours are just as good as the imports, but cheaper. Well, they were cheaper. Uh, the quality was sometimes lacking a little bit. Um, but uh, after the war, the industry really took off, uh, although the uh, imports continued to come over from both England and France, especially France. There was a lot of, a lot of French papers uh, used, used in early uh, 19th century America. Is there just one way of making wallpaper? Or? What we do is we, we block print, which is the traditional way of uh, producing wallpaper. That was how it was first produced up until the 1840s, 1850s, when uh, mechanization came along, roller printing, which made um, uh, the manufacturing much quicker much cheaper and so the the number of uh, patterns and companies uh, proliferated um, quite a bit at that point. Uh, it changed the look of the wallpaper. It wasn't as uh, it wasn't as physical, it wasn't as um, rich as block printed paper, but it became you know, very, very, very affordable for folks. And then after that, in the 20th century, then screen printing came along and now of course uh, a lot of papers are actually digitally digitally printed. Um, but we like, the, we like the old system. Can you, can you give us some examples of uh, historic wallpapers that you have recreated for any of the historic sites? Oh, yeah, let's see. I mean, we can go around the room. Um, I mean, we've done several papers for um, presidential homes. We did a paper for James Buchanan's house in Wheatlands, Pennsylvania. 
We're working on several patterns for Mount Vernon. We've done a little border for Monticello. We've done some projects over in England as well for the... For That's kind of ironic. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah here you import it to England. Strawberry Hill in, uh, in Twickenham and uh, Sir John Sounds Museum in London. Um, and, and a lot of projects for small, um, small historic sites sort of up and down the East Coast. Um, um, you know, some places, it's a case where they found a scrap of paper and we were able to reproduce it. And more often than not, they'll, uh, these small um, entities will choose a pattern from our, from our existing line. Now you say block printing, so I'm assuming you're talking about a wooden block, right? Yeah, yeah. And so what do you have to do? You have to carve the... Yeah, and, uh, and I can probably show you that. easier than uh, than just explain. Okay. And uh, I see you're doing a uh, straight line, so that must be an easy job, right? Well, you would think so, but no, actually, uh, printing straight lines is, is is pretty difficult. This is uh, this is a um, a test print. This is a custom color version of a pattern uh, that we've done for a long time called Arthur and Robert Stripe. Uh, it was a French pattern early early 1800s. Um, but the problem with uh, printing stripes is that um, if the stripes on the block don't meet exactly, right. even then, then it, that's where your eye goes. And so, so it, takes, it takes a fair amount of practice. And this one has, you have to print it four times to get the whole pattern. So, so you have plenty of opportunity for um, for um, miscalculation, but uh, but like I say, this is you know with with practice, um, uh, you can usually get it get it looking pretty good. Yeah. Can we put some pressure on Michelle? And sure. Have her yeah. do it. Sure. So this is um, just gonna make sure I have enough paint on my. Um, and that's what kind of fabric is that? It looks like velour. It's actually just an acrylic felt. Originally, they used wool felt. And so you got to make sure the paint is on every piece of that, right? Yep. Yeah. Good um, paint everywhere. And then I'm going to use these two pins here so to line it up. Yep. Oh, I see. So the first block has pins in the same spot, and that sets up the registration for all of the other all of the other blocks. This looks like a horseshoe. Oh yeah, the bridge. Yeah. Bridge, is that how we call it? That's what we call it. Bridge. And then, so that's like a pressure bridge, right? To yep. The foot, the foot pedal applies the pressure. And that's the first You want to stop there, Michelle? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's what you get. Uh -huh. No, so you have to keep going. And um, it's like Steve was saying, it's four blocks, so four colors. Um, gives you like 80 chances to mess up per roll. <laughs> 80 chances to mess so, up. So that means literally if you get to the last layer and you screw it up, the whole thing is... Yeah, yeah. You can't so we always, we always print a little extra just so that we, you know, don't have to go back and start over again. Right. And, and of course some patterns, if they're not exactly registered correctly, that's okay. I mean, then it, some of them never were. Right. right. Um, and, uh, but this one, this one is a little, a little fussy. But even on the original for this one, you can see there was little spots where it didn't yeah. quite line up. So yeah, interesting. Well, this is great. Thanks for showing all this. this yeah, really you're welcome. Great. Could you tell us what was a popular theme of a wallpaper in 18th century against 19th century? Was there a popular theme? Oh, well, there was, I mean, there were a number of uh, pattern motifs that were used. Quite often they would copy uh, textile patterns, um, uh, particularly uh, damasks um, and stripes and, and, and florals. Um, so the popularity of designs sort of came and went. Um, and some, some kinds of patterns 
were just always popular. Um, little little sprig things were always popular. What about murals? I mean, I've been in some historic sites where the whole wall is like oh, yeah, one mural. Yeah, that's, like it'd be a pastoral uh, scene. Were, or... There were several companies in France that printed those, and one, of course, is still in existence. That's uh, Zubair, uh, and they, they block print um, scenics, which require thousands of blocks and hundreds of colors. And to get one scene. To get one scene, yeah. And it, 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 so something like that is sort of beyond our, our scope. But they, they still have the blocks and they still, they still print the, the patterns. It so. reminds me a lot of like uh, cast iron uh, architecture, for example, because to make a, a cast iron piece, you have to do the same thing. You have to have a wooden, you know, take a piece of wood and you, you, draw, you carve out basically what you're going to make. Yeah. And then, but instead of printing it, you literally put it in sand and then you pour molten iron and yeah. you get that yeah. pattern. So yeah. it's kind of a similar process. In a way, yeah, yeah. yeah. How easy it is to maintain a, um, does, does, does having a wallpaper in your house require any maintenance to it? Anything you have to do extra to the walls? Well, our paper and the paint that we use, um, are, it's a very matte paint. Um, so it will, it will, um, stain if you know relatively easy relative to more commercial papers you have to be you have to be careful with it and um and wait till the kids move out um, oh. yeah. <laughs> now, I, I see on your walls you've got like hundreds of different patterns i'm assuming those are your patterns right uh so, yeah so mm -hmm. you made all of these different yeah wallpapers yeah do you have any idea exactly how many uh, different types of wallpaper you've printed? Uh, I think we have, a, I think, about 120 sidewall patterns and about 50, 60 border patterns or for, patterns for borders or, or freezes. But who's your um, main, say, consumer? Is it historic sites or is it...? Well, initially it was. I mean, initially we didn't know how this would fly at all. Um, um, Chris Orstrom, my business partner, uh, just felt that it it would be you know that, that there was enough interest in the sorts of things that we were doing that it could be a business. Uh, initially, we were part of a wallpaper demonstration area over at the Farmers Museum in Cooperstown that he had set up. And after a few years, like I say, he just felt like there was enough interest that it could be a business. So, so initially, yeah, it, we were working mostly for historic sites and museums. Um, and then we started to work with uh, uh, a, a showroom in New York City and they, they liked the patterns, they wanted to make some changes. Um, and so now I would say probably a good 75% of our business is with uh, designers, uh, either individually or sh through showrooms. Uh, we do have some private individuals that, that, that purchase directly from us. And then we, like I said, we, we still have the, the historic market. Yeah. So, so most of your business in New York, in the city, or is it? Uh, up and down the East Coast, uh, New York City is the, is the primary, uh, primary market. And, uh, but yeah, we have a showroom in, uh, in, in Washington, in Atlanta, in Florida, and uh, Texas, uh, and then in, in London as well as Paris. Is this your background? I mean, is this what you started out as, as a career, or did... No, no, although my, my father, when I was quite small, uh, managed to paint in a wallpaper store, um, so he would bring home the obsolete catalogs that I got to cut up. And, and, and of course, we had rather more wallpaper in the, our house than most people did. So I was always exposed to it. And, uh, and uh, so it's, it's sort of a long story, but I, I was using wallpaper in my artwork and then came across the project at the Farmers Museum and decided, yeah, you know, this, this looked kind of interesting. So England and France were leaders in the wallpaper making. Mm -hmm. And um, actually there's an example of a wallpaper that was found in an English home that it's the pattern has been printed on the back of uh, London Proclamation of 1509. Yeah. Are there any other examples? Oh yeah, because paper at that time was a little, little more expensive than it is now, and so if you had some some extra paper, you would you know you could you could glue the sheets together, then slap some paint on, and 
and, and make use of it that way. So, um, so could you show us around? Show us uh, yeah. how, how mm -hmm. you make some of this? Yeah. So what do you got here? Well, this is a photograph of a wallpaper pattern uh, that we are reproducing. We usually like to work from original documents, but sometimes uh, that's not, not, not possible. So this is a, uh, this is a French pattern. Uh, the low, it's, it's just a, obviously just a portion of it. Um, and it's what's called an arabesque, which we, we have done several arabesques. Uh, what we've done is uh, when we make uh, patterns is we draw transparencies that um, correspond to each to each printed color. Yes. And so this was the first color. And then this small little one here was the second color. Oh. And so you just keep building it up. And this pattern has, uh, uh, there's nine, nine different colors on it in this section. And then there's another section over here. So to do um, by section. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll take these patterns and a block of wood like this, which we have made up. And we send the, uh, the transparencies uh, to a laser company, and they they oh, burn they burn, it they burn it in. Yeah. The old way you would have to. Do well, it. yeah. This is our major concession to modern technology. Right. So, right. Uh, right. Yeah. If I always say, if we were hand carving, we would have you know five patterns by now. Right. Um, mm -hmm. it, I've I've tried it, and it's it, it's very satisfying. But wood carving is is a whole another. Yeah. Whole another whole another thing. And labor so, intensive. And, yeah, yeah. Now is that a soft wood or a hard wood? No, well, no. Oh, this is it's uh, a composite. It's uh, the base, and mostly it's Baltic uh, birch plywood. But the the printing surface uh, is uh, Swiss pear. Swiss pear mm -hmm. is very hardwood, uh, mm -hmm. uh, very straight grain, and it holds holds the pattern well um, after repeated uh, pressings and cleanings. Uh, it, it was one of the traditional woods for for uh, for uh, uh, block printing. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that each of these uh, pieces of mylar is a separate block. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you might have 50 blocks for one piece of paper. Well, uh, I think the most blocks we have for one pattern is 49. So very very oh, good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Most of the patterns we have. Uh, usually use maybe one, two, or three blocks. They're much, much simpler. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is block uh, four. And uh, let's see, there's four. That's for the other one. There's four. Okay. There we go. So this will be uh, this will be used uh, in a little bit. Um, uh, these patterns are also related to this. This is a border that was found with it. And as you can see, it's in very, bad, very, bad shape. really I mean, bad yeah. shape. Yeah. So how did you know well, how to reproduce it? Yeah. Michelle worked on this one and she, she sort of had to go section to section and fill in each little piece that she could, that she could. So this one, there are, uh, uh, looks like uh, eight, eight, eight patterns for this for this border, and uh, so this this is a project that we're working on for um, the hallway at Mount Vernon. Oh wow! So we'll see this when we know what it's about. Yeah, yeah. Was it, this an original pattern there? Well, no, it was. It was. Um, they don't know exactly what was at Mount Vernon. They found some little scraps uh, and they knew that Washington purchased wallpaper from a particular uh, store in, in, in Philadelphia and this pattern was also purchased at that same store but it wasn't this pattern uh, but it was it's similar in style to the kind of thing that they would have had there yes. yeah and we what do we see here we see here a, a woman well there's a yeah sort of a uh, Athena it was that a Greek goddess or? yeah well, here's this is it's this classical, is anyway. yeah this is this is um, a, a test print here um, and uh, so you can see there's a can kind I of a dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Um, You're so good. Wow. Okay. So, um, but as you can see, it's just a test print because things right. weren't printing at that point. 
So this particular piece that you just showed us mm -hmm. is all of these different pieces put together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so. each color that we see is is block printed. Correct. Onto the paper. Yeah. Yeah. So you gotta let this paper dry. Each yeah, you each when time. you when you print you let it dry and then you hang it up. And, and how do you get the register correct? Well, so, we uh, can we can I'll oh, show we'll you that when we're when we're okay. when we're printing. Okay. Yeah. How long does it take to make a like a wallpaper like this for you know um, like the place you're you're doing it for right now? How well, long? Well, uh, this one uh, is. Mm, it's difficult to say. I mean, because yeah. when you're doing something for the first time, there's always lots of adjusting and yeah. and yes. changes changes that you have to make as you, as you, know, you as, you, as you go because yes. it's difficult to anticipate every every little yes. thing. Um, and you know, sometimes you have to reformulate the paint so that it so that it covers better, um, make it thicker, make it thinner, and press harder, yes. press not quite so hard. And uh, so, so there are some patterns that we print all the time, and, and, yeah. and not that we can do them with our eyes closed, but yeah. it's, you know, they're, they're much easier. Yeah. Right. So what else can you show us? Well, let's see. These are some patterns. This be mm, about ten years ago. Someone sent us. Someone sent us a, a sandwich of wallpaper. Sandwich. Um, it was. Uh, one layer of paper pasted on another, pasted on another. Because at that point, they didn't take the paper off before they put another one on. Right. And so this came from a house in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, it was in a hallway. And there were seven, seven layers. So this, this pattern here, this was, a, this was a machine printed paper. I mean, it's, the paints are very thin, uh, watery. Um, um, and the kind of paper, it's, it's fairly, fairly brittle because it's a, a wood pulp paper. Uh, but the pattern is um, mm, just sort of a large um, ashlar pattern. Ashlars are, are, are blocks, large blocks. So this was the first layer. And we took that off and we ended up with, with mm, another ashlar pattern, a smaller block. Um, but also, also machine printed. So this is like 1870s or so. And we took that one off and we came up with, oh, look, another oh, ashlar. Yeah. Um, but this one is block printed. So this, yeah. this one, you know, is probably 1840s. Uh, the paints are a lot thicker. Uh, the pattern is a, is, is a lot bolder. It's a pretty and, vivid color. Yeah, yeah, and, and the paper itself uh, at, by then would have been, it's a, it's a cotton-based paper, so it's a lot stronger. How do you take a wallpaper like this off? We, you, you, we just put the whole thing in a big vat of water and let it soak for a day. Mm -hmm. And then that just loosened all the glue up. And, and you, you know, when you do that, I mean, you get some of the, the the, 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 the lower, the, the underlying yeah. pattern on the back, but, uh, but most of it sticks to the to But the I mean, paper. how do you take it off the wall? Oh, well, that's, that, that can get kind of tricky. <laughs> the whole wall. No, no, you, you sort of miss the paper and then try to, like you make a cut at the top of the, of the paper and start introducing water, misting it and letting it kind of soak and you just have to have lots of patience yeah, how long uh, because it's it, the tempting is tempting to just kind of yeah, pick I know. it yeah, yeah. But you just you just let it soak how long does it take to take a wallpaper off the wall depends hard to say yeah yeah this one was under that one and this was a what's called a field and stripe pattern and under that was another field and stripe pattern, kind of a kind of a moire yeah. pattern there. And then under that one was this one, which we reproduced, uh, and it's up on the wall there. And that was the second layer. And then the first layer was. Um, was this pattern here, and we have more of this, but uh, this is uh, gives you an, gives you an idea. Uh, and that, when it's reproduced, comes out like this. Yeah. Wow. So it's, you know, this is early early 19th century. It's very very bold, muscular yeah. kind of yeah. pattern. Um, we figure it's probably from Philadelphia, 
um, that is similar to other patterns from, yeah. from Philadelphia at that time. Did it Andy Warhol um, design wallpaper? Oh, he, yeah, he, he, he played. Yeah, he, he, he played around with the, with the idea of wallpaper. Yeah. Ah. Do you ever produce any psychedelic wallpapers for people? How about Peter Max? <laughs> no, but do you personally have you ever? No, produced? no, no. Now we pretty much concentrate on uh, on historic patterns. Although we yeah. have been we have been playing with um, with uh, d d making some of our own patterns as well. It is there a way to? Is there a is there a way of making a wallpaper that does, um, you know, that um, what do you call it? That that it like moves when you look at it. Oh, so like a, a holograph? Yes. Like a holograph? Is, is there is there is there a way to make a wallpaper that's holographic? So when you look at it long enough, it starts moving. I I. When you're told. I, I suppose I so. Know, but I, yeah. think the, I think that was the Andy Warhol wallpaper yeah. uh, during no, the 60s. No, I mean, no, we're, it, you know, block printing can do some things very well and some things it, yeah. it, it doesn't do at all. So, right. uh, so we, I mean, I, what, what attracts us is that it's a very simple, um, deliberate method of printing. There isn't much involved. You've got paint, you've got paper, right. and you've got a block of wood. Right. And, yes, and, yes, yes, and yet, yes. and, and you produce all these beautiful wallpapers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Oh, this looks like a sort of a complicated piece. Well, this is this is by far and away our most complicated pattern. It's a um, uh, reproduction of um, a, an arabesque uh, by the company Revion. It was their catalog number 16. Um, it's block printed a little bit. Uh, the black lines in here, the red lines in here. The yellow over colors in here; those are block printed, just like we right. do. All of the other colors are hand painted, and and then the last thing we do is we put gold leaf on all of the figures. And that's all done by hand. This is all done by hand. So this was this was a project where everyone was involved with the production of it. Uh, Dave, um, who's not here today, he printed uh, the ochre colors and the lines. Uh, Michelle and and, uh, and and Lori did the hand coloring, um, Jen did the gold leaf, and Michelle and Jen drew the patterns. So it was, wow. uh, Real it, team yeah, yeah it, it took took about nine months yeah, to, wow. do, to do a room. We did it for a museum down in Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, it's the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution right. uh, Museum. But it's a, yeah, it's a French pattern, uh, 1787. Um, uh, you know, we never know that was hand painted, though. No, it's no, just, it's, it's it's like a large watercolor, yeah. and, and that's that's how you handle it. So. I'm not going to ask how much that would cost. Okay, to do it, okay. because I have a feeling it's it's it expensive. was yeah yeah. yeah yeah. Well, great, thank you. This is yeah beautiful. No, piece. No, we always it's particularly particularly nice in the late afternoon when the sun is coming in mm -hmm. and the lights are off and the gold just kind of yeah, shines. Up, yeah. yeah. So we covered another topic in Sharon Springs, New York. Hope you enjoyed that adventure. And we will see you again on History, History on, on the, the Road. Road.
So, Don, how you doing today? Uh, my back is killing me.